this relationship has got to be about something. And fast, or I am in very serious and weird trouble. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 awkward dating moments on Seinfeld. Look, I was just trying to get. I know what you were trying to do. Nobody does it better than me. For this list, we're looking at the times when characters' love lives got a little too cringe. What moment made you uncomfortable the most? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. George lies about being a marine biologist. When Jerry runs into George's college crush Diane, he says that George is now a marine biologist. Impressed, she gets his number. Yeah, she asked for your number. I think she's going to get in touch with you. Okay, I'm telling you right now. If you're kidding around, I'm not going to be able to be a friend anymore. And even though he's frustrated with Jerry for giving him a pretend career... Look, why couldn't you make me an architect? <laughs> you know I always wanted to pretend that I was an architect. George goes along with it. He and Diane spend their first and only date at the beach, where he recites facts about sea creatures. Then, of course, with evolution, the octopus lost the nostrils and took on the more familiar look that we know today. <laughs> really? Yeah. But if you still look closely, you can see uh, a little bump where the nose used to be. Just his luck, they come across a crowd of onlookers worried about a beached whale. Diane puts him on the spot in front of everyone, fully expecting him to intervene. Save the whale, George, for me. All George can do is awkwardly head into the water. Miraculously, he does save the whale by dislodging a golf ball from its blowhole. But when he tells Diane the truth, she's no longer impressed. Number 9. Aaron, the Close Talker What's more awkward than someone, especially a stranger, invading your personal space? Elaine's boyfriend Aaron knows no boundaries, and is what Jerry calls a close talker. And it doesn't take long for the Seinfelds to understand what he means. So how long are you folks in town? Uh -oh. <laughs> three more days, three more days, and then we're off to Paris. Ah. We're going with the select charter group. I love France. I was just there last year. Aaron is the nicest guy, but he may be a little too nice. Oh, that is so nice, Aaron. <laughs> Isn't he nice? He clearly loves people. So much so that he needs to be as close as possible when talking to them. Elaine can't help but wonder why he's going out of his way to show Jerry's parents a good time while they're in New York. But don't you think it's odd? that a 35-year-old man is going to these lengths to see that someone else's parents are enjoying themselves? I mean, don't you find that abnormal? He gets so worked up when they finally leave that it's more than a little off-putting. This ring is one more dinner I could have taken them out to. <laughs> water. They need some water. Why? Go get the hydrant out of the plane. Get the side pumps of water. Maybe a little distance isn't such a bad thing. Number 8. Sidra's Spectacular Chest Jerry is smitten with Sidra Holland, a beautiful woman at the health club. Elaine suggests she has breast implants. You know, uh, they're fake. <laughs> what? Don't say that! Nah, they're fake! How do you know? I can tell! But when Sidra's obviously natural breasts break her fall in the sauna, Elaine discovers she was mistaken. Anyway, uh... They're real. <laughs> Excuse me? I think they might be real. Pleased with this good news, Jerry asks Sidra out again. At his apartment, Jerry awkwardly broaches the topic of big bosoms, commenting on the sizes of women today and the deceased Jane Mansfield. You know that Jane Mansfield had some big breasts. <laughs> Really big, huge, just coming out the top of her dress, they're like choking her. Despite his awkward conversation, he almost gets to experience Sidra's chest for himself. But Kramer and Elaine stop by unannounced. Realizing that Elaine must have fallen on purpose in an attempt to test the authenticity of her breasts, Sidra immediately leaves. But not before delivering one of the show's most iconic lines. And by the way, they're real oh. and they're spectacular. <laughs> Number 7. It's not you, it's me. When Jerry and George go to a tennis match, George is unknowingly captured on TV stuffing his face full of Sunday. His girlfriend Gwen breaks up with him, possibly because she saw the unflattering on-screen appearance. She gives him the old it's not you, it's me line. You're giving me the it's not you, it's me routine? 
I invented it's not you, it's me. Nobody tells me it's them, not me. If it's anybody, it's me. All right. George, it's you. You're damn right it's me. After the breakup, George has to see her at their mutual friend Todd's party. Here is where Jerry's new love interest comes in. Laura is deaf and is able to read lips pretty well. And George hatches a plan to have her read Gwen's lips at the party to see what she says about him. Uh, Laura, uh, George was wondering if... Sure. I'll do it. In true Seinfeld fashion, there's a misunderstanding that leads George to make a fool of himself. Will you stop signing? <laughs> what? They said sweep together, you idiots, not sleep together. Number six, the blue condom. Jerry and Elaine set up the desperate and hopeless George with the bitter Cynthia since they're both discouraged by the dating scene. Come on, let's do it. I think they'll really get along. What? Yeah, are you into this? Yeah, come on, it's a good match. They're reluctant to be fixed up, but they give it a shot anyway. Their talk on the phone goes well, though George is upset that Cynthia didn't tell Elaine about the quality of the conversation. They end up having sex on their first date, and it wasn't great. The kitchen is a weird place to start getting intimate with someone, and Cynthia thinks so too, because she leaves shortly after. He was uncomfortable because it was our first time, so he felt he would perform better if we did it in the kitchen. <laughs> He says the kitchen is always the most sociable room in the house, and he was serious. There's a pregnancy scare, and Elaine suspects George might have used one of Kramer's colorful and likely defective condoms. Was it blue? <laughs> yeah. How'd you know? Just a hunch. George's supportiveness woos Cynthia, but once she sees the way he eats, she's clearly disgusted. Number five, Jerry proposes a menage a trois. Having a sense of humor is usually at the top of everyone's must-haves for a partner. And for Jerry, a comedian, it's non-negotiable. I mean, how can I be with someone that doesn't laugh? It's like, well, it's like something. It bugs him that Sandy doesn't laugh and is essentially humorless, making for dull, awkward exchanges. Her roommate, on the other hand, does laugh at Jerry's jokes. Oh, hi, you must be Jerry. Sandy's in the shower, you wanna come in? Well, I would, except I forgot to bring a towel. <laughs> he now wants to pull a roommate switch. Jerry explains his predicament to George, and after pulling an all-nighter, comes up with a plan. A threesome. Jerry's suggestion to Sandy goes much better than he expected, but ultimately, it's just not him. I have to grow a mustache and get all kinds of robes and lotions and... <laughs> I need a new bedspread, new curtains. I'd have to get thick carpeting and weird old lighting. Of course, I'd have to get new friends. I'd have to get orgy friends. No, I'm not ready for it. Number four, George and the answering machine. After George has a great date with his new love interest, Donna, she invites him up for coffee. Not considering that she may just want him to come in for something more intimate than caffeine, George declines the offer. Would you like to come upstairs for some coffee? Oh, no, thanks. I can't drink coffee late at night. It keeps me up. He immediately regrets his response, kicking himself for potentially missing out on sex. Jerry and Elaine encourage him to call her, but he gets her machine. Watching George leave the first message was cringe itself, but we can only imagine what the subsequent aggressive messages sounded like. George convinces Jerry to help him swap out the machine tapes. You do it for me. <laughs> what? Come on, it'll be so much easier. How are you gonna get me up there? I'll tell her I bumped into you. I'm giving you a ride uptown. And who makes the switch? You do. Donna definitely doesn't make it easy for them, and they fumble through the plan. But it turns out she already heard the messages and thought they were hilarious. Yours were hilarious. We were both cracking up. I just love jokes like that. Number three, George dates a female Jerry. George finds himself in some weird trouble when Elaine and Kramer tell him that his new girlfriend Janet looks exactly like Jerry. And you must look exactly like Jerry. <laughs> you don't see this? Oh, you're like twins. Woo this is Eric. <laughs> what are you talking about? What? Janet doesn't look anything like Jerry. He somehow missed it before, but now that's all he sees when he looks at her. George stresses over their relationship being mainly physical, and Janet reminds him that he complimented her looks when they first met. Oh, you told me how familiar I looked and that you must have seen me somewhere before. He desperately tries to find some common ground in their relationship, but it seems to be based on physical attraction. And when Janet gets gum stuck in her hair and cuts it really short, her resemblance to Jerry becomes undeniable. 
and George literally runs away from her. Yeah. Well, I had to cut the gum out. I had a little trouble getting it even. So why didn't you get undressed, George? <laughs> George is in real trouble! Number two, love and a big matzo ball. When you tell someone that you love them, you kind of expect a certain response. Because if you don't get that return, that's a pretty big matzo ball hanging out there. George takes a big step with his girlfriend, Sienna, and professes his love for her. I love you. You know, I'm hungry. Let's get something to eat. But sadly, she's more interested in eating. George is both relieved and irritated when he learns that she has bad hearing in her left ear. Sienna must not have heard him. Don't you see what this means? It's, it's, it's like the whole thing never happened. It, it, it's like when Superman reversed the rotation of the Earth to save Lois Lane. So after kissing in his car, he says it again. And this time, he makes sure it's in her right ear. But guess what? She did hear him say it the first time, and she still doesn't say it back. Sienna, I love you. Yeah, I know. I heard you the first time. <laughs> Just confirm. Ouch. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Jerry's disgusted with Shelly. An overreaction would be an understatement. You ate these? You, you sucked on these and then put them on the plate? Well, I didn't know you were going to eat them. Still. <laughs> I'm sorry you find me so repulsive. Taking credit for the big salad. The pettiness is strong with George. And what I would like to know is how does a person who has virtually nothing to do with a big salad claim responsibility for that salad and accept a thank you under false pretenses, huh? Lynette and the dude. Picking up your date who just showered with someone else. Not awkward at all, right? Sorry, I'm running late. I just lost track of time. No rush. Hey, Jer, what's up? <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. Jillian's man hands. Jerry just can't get past the hands. Just not hungry. Well, then at least drink your beer. <laughs> Marissa Tomei punches George. George tells the movie star he's actually engaged. I'm sort of engaged. <laughs> what? I'm, you know, engaged. Number one, Phil Totola takes it out. Poor Elaine. She really can't catch a break in the dating department. The guys she meets seem relatively normal at first. I bumped into Phil Totola. He is one of the greatest guys. Do I know him? No, but I tell you something, of all the guys I know, I could envision you going out with him. But there's always a creep factor lurking below the surface. Jerry sets her up with his friend Phil, someone he really thinks she'll hit it off with. <laughs> Oh, this has been one hell of a night. Oh, I'm sorry Jerry didn't suggest this sooner. Clearly, the two had a great time because they couldn't stop laughing. All is well until Phil unexpectedly exposes himself to Elaine. Good night. Good night? Well. We're just as horrified as she is at that moment. So you were talking, mm -hmm. you're having a pleasant conversation, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden... Yeah. It. It. Out. Out. <laughs> Luckily for us, we didn't have to actually see it. Watch all 180 episodes of Seinfeld anytime on Netflix.